टू एवरी वन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ पारोल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पारोल यूनिवर्सिटी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट आई वेलकम ऑल दी ऑडियंस एंड अवर गेस्ट स्पीकर प्रोफेसर नाजुक पारेख before starting the commencement of the program i would like to introduce professor naju parekh she is working as a assistant professor at faculty of engineering and technology ms university vadodara and she is a phd scholar at gujarat technological university she has published many papers in various international and national conferences and journals and i proud of parol university she has completed her mtech from parol university uh, from the ec department itself and today she is going to deliver talk on fifth technologies what are the challenges and what kind of benefits or features are there in fifth generation wireless communication technology she is going to focus on all these areas i hope the next one hour or 45 to 50 minutes will be fruitful for all of you 10 minutes we may have question answer session so uh, from the uh, facebook page live facebook page all of you can write down your comments and based on that kushan gandhi will raise the question to the speaker and you will get the answer so thank you very much for accepting our invitation najuk madam and uh, to start yes, the presentation sir. so over to you yes you can share your okay story. okay thank you very much sir first of all uh, i would like to thank uh, my previous university which is the parul university it's i feel nostalgic right now <laughs> same i am dealing with the department of the electronics and communication and uh, uh, i am very much thankful to dr rutvi joshi sir for inviting me for this talk and i am also thankful to uh, mr Rushank uh, Gandhi for uh, helping me to carry out this session successfully. Okay, so uh, let's start our today's talk. It's about the five G. As you people know, what is the five G? Five G stands for the fifth generation of the uh, wireless communication. Okay, so it is like. Uh, let me just start the presentation. Okay. so this is the symbolic representation of 5g and we are going to represent uh, we are going to present today about the systems and network structures of the 5g and what is the 5g okay that is the main thing now uh, you can see over here this is the overview that we are going to see in this uh, seminar uh, that is a talk show that is about uh, the definition of the 5g and how we move from 1g to 5g what are the objectives what are the vision what are the definitions and how we are going to implement means right now 5g is in deployment stage so how we are going to implement this 5g in our network okay so that is the main thing that we are going to focus in today's scenario so let's see first of all we have this question in mind that what is the 5g okay it's the 5g okay g stands for the generation right we are moving from first generation to the fifth generation okay we are updating ourselves and that upgradation is taking around a decade okay taking around a decade so you can say from the 19 uh, uh, 1990s it started and till the 2000 and after that till the 2010 and now it's 2020 right so 5g uh, is also known as imt 2020 project okay so uh let's 
let's understand what is the meaning of 5G. And for that, you have to understand this all eight questions, right? So first of all is that, uh, name the three main service category, which is con considering 5G standardization. Okay, what is how 5G will coexist with the LTE and 4G? These are the questions that we are going to address in this presentation. Okay, so third question is like, uh, what should be the requirement? What should be the performance requirement for the 5G for the machine to machine applications? Okay, what we are doing with over here, mainly we are going with the new age that is the machine to machine communication. And for that, how 5G will how 5G will give, how 5G will fulfill the requirements, okay? Another thing, the applications, which demands the EMBB, okay? EMBB stands for Enhanced Mobile Broadband, Broadband, okay? Right now, you have the mobile phone, you require lots of data, you require the speed, okay? This all things, you require the broadband on the mobile, okay? So for uh, for that applications, you require to, you, you go for the, right now, you are using the 4G network works okay but how 5g will fulfill such requirements that we are going to see which category will driverless cars and factory automation come into okay this is the another application of the 5g like you are uh, you have you must have seen what is the uh, this is the next advancement you can see even in a newspaper before or two days we have just uh, we have just seen that all the countries are competing with each other with the trains okay like they are having a driverless trains, they are having a driverless cars and how the factory automation and all that, okay? So how, where this all things falls, okay? Where this all things falls, it falls in which category? It falls in the category of the beyond the 5G, like on the 5G and beyond of that, okay? Then the basic question, the basic question is that he, uh, we know that 1G to 4G connects the people Okay, 1G to 4G means what is the main thing that we do for the communicating, for the communication purpose, for connecting with each other, what we do, we use the mobile, okay, we use the text messages, we use the, uh, we use the social pages like that, okay. But if we are having this all things, but then what is the need of the 5G? Then what is the, what, what 5G, why, where the 5G will come into picture? Okay, what the 5G is aiming for, that is the another question, right? Second one is, what is the key technique which can help to combine multiple technologies to serve users? Okay, multiple technologies, like suppose uh, you are sitting in your home and you want to connect your, uh, let's take an example of IoT. Okay, IoT stands for the what? Internet of things, right? Internet on the things, right? So you are putting your any devices, any, any suppose takes, a, takes an, as an example as a refrigerator, okay? You want to know how refrigerator can communicate with you, how washing machine can communicate with you, how TV can communicate with you, okay? So what you are going to do, you are going to, you are going to multiplex this all technologies into a one network, okay? That is, that is the how much, how much you can, uh, how how that all things, how that all uh, electronics things can can communicate with the user. Okay, that is the key technique that we will see. What is the feature that help operator to offer different service segments on one 5G network? Okay, this is the main thing. That is what one 5G network. There will be only a one network, and it provides all the services to all the features. Okay, it provides all the features, all the services to all the architecture and to all the network. Okay, so this is what we are going to see in this one hour. Okay, so let's see. First of all, let's start with the overview of the 1G to 4G. Okay, that is also known as a 3GPP evolution. Okay, so you can see it starts from the 1980s and reach reach toward the 2020. Okay, so in 1980s, you have an analog cellular communication system. Okay, that is also known as a 1G in which only you can call. Okay, this is the analog cellular communication. You must have seen. Okay, then after that, another decade. See, it is a like decades. It, at every decade, the technology is changing from 80s to 90s, 90s to 2000s, and then like then on the 2010 and then 2020. So in 2000, if we say, if we say in 1990s, you are having a 2G, okay, 2G, that is the second, second generation. 
and what it is had what it has it has a 144 kilobits per second of data rate okay and it supports the circuit switch voice okay circuit switch it is a circuit switch network same analog was even a circuit switch network okay this is the circuit switch which supports the voiced communication Okay, voice communication. Then this all bubble, this all bubble, the purple bubble indicates the generation. And this 2G goes with the three, three uh, technology like 2.5G, 2.8G likewise. Okay, you are moving, you are moving towards the, you are moving towards the 3G, you are moving towards the 4G and you are moving towards the 5G. Okay, this is like in a decade how you move right so it starts with the gsm okay gprs ish technology okay but when you are moving when you are moving from 2g to 2.5g and 2.8g you are using the packet switch data okay you are using the packet switch data that is another another evolution okay from circuit switch you jump to the packet switch data after that there is a 3g okay in the next decade that is uh, from it start from the 2000 and it till it, it reside till the 2010 okay and from that you are having a another three standards that is the 3g 3.5g and 3.8g okay so it goes with the umts which supports the circuit switch then hspa and hspa plus they all goes with the packet switch data now what comes over here what comes over here we are having a voice as well as the data transmission okay that means you you can you text your friend okay you text through the messages right so that is the one evolution that comes in the 3g after that you have the 4g which start from the 2010 okay it is also known as lte okay it is also known as lte and lte advance Okay, so, <coughs> so LTE and LTE advance, they go with the packet core technology. Okay, it goes with the packet core technology. It is also known as a PCE. Okay, now in that, you can see these are the maximum channel bandwidth. Okay, bandwidth which is supported with this network. Now, it gives you a GBPS of speed. Okay, you can see in 4G. Okay, LTE advanced, if you are having a, right now your smartphones are well equipped with the 1 Gbps data speed. Okay, but they'll mange more, you want more and more data, right? Till what? Till 20 Gbps, 50 Gbps, 100 Gbps, yes, we want more. As we know that, uh, we, like the li uh, we like the live streaming, okay, right now as we are live streaming with you, okay? We like the, we want to see the Olympics, right? which is live stream to your uh, mobile okay you want you don't want any glitches in that so for that we are moving more and more towards the 5g and uh, beyond the 5g that is 6g 7g likewise okay now one more thing that i was told you uh, that i told you about the glitch okay what that glitch is that is main thing with the 5g is the latency Okay, latency in cellular network. You can see how it is decreased. You can see this graph, okay, how it is decreased. The first of all, GPRS, okay, GPRS, the 2G system. Okay, we say we say GPRS is the 2G system. It has a latency, it is in millisecond, it, it goes around 650, right? Then there is a H technology that is 2.8, that is released 99. It goes with the 400. How it is decreasing? You can see over 650 to 400. After the 400 to 250. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, it's about 180. Then WCDMA, HSTPA, HSUPA, and LTE. That's currently you are using. And how much is the millisecond? It is in millisecond. Latency is in millisecond. That means there is no, uh, there is no glitch. You can have a live streaming. You can see your cricket match. You can have, a, you can have a totally live streaming of the football stadium. Right. Everything. Right. And even uh, you can see uh, the online platform OTTs that's right now working. OK, many people in a one home, even four people are there and four people are having a four smartphones and all that uh, smartphones at a time. They are using the they are using the OTT platform. OK, so what we are going, we are moving towards the we are moving towards the 5G. We are moving towards we are moving towards the less of latency. Right. Let me show you one window. 
let me show you one video on that which just clear your idea idea about the 5g okay so just Action. see this you can see on the screen here behind me we're showing the current latency of what would be a 4g okay in this video you can see it shows the latency it is in milliseconds and this is around 100 millisecond for the 4g network okay g network is around 90 to 100 milliseconds and on the right hand side you'll be able to see this line move as we move the ball on the plate so what i'm going to do is move so what this person is doing he's going to uh, move this ball and what these three robots are going to do they are going to balance this ball to the center position okay just check it move this ball right now and we can see the oscillations here tracked on this graph and how long it takes for the robots to collaborate with each other to get the information they need to balance the ball okay so this is how three robots are collaborating with each other and they are just balancing this ball okay on the plate and then we're going to switch into 5g mode and we can see on this graph here that we've now now we are moving towards the 5g mode okay you can see this is the 100 millisecond latency now we have totally downward to the three milliseconds of latency i've gone from around 90 milliseconds to around three milliseconds so much much lower latency in the network and i'm going to do exactly the same again and we can see that we only took one oscillation there to correct the ball. So you, you can see, right, how much less time it, it takes to just balance this ball to the center position. This is what the 5G is. Okay, so let's just have a brief. You can see how the reduction of the latency of the network improves the communication between the machines, which is critical for future networks. Okay, so this is what is 5G. Okay, in just one video, you can see like three robots are communicating with each other and how much time they take for communication with each other in the 4G network and in 5G network, it differs a lot. Okay, now this is what the timeline. Okay, this is what the timeline. This is for the IMT standards, 3G, 4G and 5G. You can see it starts from the 1985, but it's not like that in a one decade, it's take a lots of time. So first of all, you have the vision. Okay, first of all, you have the vision, vision of 5G, where it starts, it starts from the year 2012. Okay, it takes around, uh, around uh, five years to have a vision, but what will be the technology? What, what will be the things that we can incorporate in this network? After that, there will be a five years of gap for the development purpose, okay? It takes till the 2020 and after 2020 it is going to be deployed in the market okay that is this is the whole timeline for any technology not only the 5g any technology if you if you take example of 3g technology you can see the 3g starts from the what it first released in 2000 but it starts from the 1985 okay it starts from the 1985 it took the 15 years for the development purpose and after that it started it, it it's, it's released in the 2000 right and 4g 4g has the vision at the 2003 okay till the 2003 from 2000 to 2003 it has a vision and after that again it's take the five years for the development purpose nine years approximately and deployment again start from the 2015 likewise okay these are the religious releases of the 3gpp okay this all is referenced from the itur you can see this it's a very good pdfs you can search this and you can just have the look of now what are the main objective the main objective of the 5g as well as other technologies let's have a comparison 1g and 2g we can see it has just a basic voice and sms right 3g and 4g you have the video calls web applications etc what is 5g what is 5g it is wireless everywhere everything okay it's not about only a smartphone it's not about only a smartphone or your laptops or your PC, which is connected with the internet. 
but it is about everything okay everything everywhere not like if you are near to the access point everywhere you are moving everywhere in the city any anywhere in the city you are having a, any device with you and that device if it is connected with the wireless 5g network you can have a many applications like you can have multimedia services machine to machine communication it's like your mobile phone is communicating with other person's mobile phone okay it's like that any machine to machine communication connecting everybody and everything this is the main objective of the 5g network okay now what is the vision what is the vision of that how we can achieve these things like as we have told we want to have uh, we want to have connection with everybody as well as every person and everything. So how to achieve that? For that, they have categorized into three categories. Okay, these are the three user cases. The first one is EMBB, that is enhanced mobile broadband. Okay, second one is massive machine type communication. Third one is ultra reliable and low latency communication. We have, we have just seen the video, you can see over that, low latency communication, right? That means what? It is applicable to the mission critical application. That is the e-health right now in this pandemic, right? We can go for this. That is the e-health. Then there is a self-driving car, right? Self-driving car. It also goes with that. Then machine to machine communication, massive machine type communication. It goes with the industry automation, right? Augmented reality and all that, right? It, it, it can also go with the smart home and the building, fine. What we have in the mobile broadband, you can see this term, it is very much differing. It is like mobile broadband. You are having a broadband on your mobile, right? Which gives you a gigabytes in a second. 3D videos, UHD screens, okay? Work and play in the cloud, right? Cloud gaming, you are doing it, right? So this is the all thing. This is the vision of the future international mobile telecommunication. This is the future of the IMT. What we require, we require the augmented reality, we require the virtual reality applications and all that. We also want the AI and ML to be used in the network, okay? For this purpose, we have to use the AI and ML, okay? Now, what is the definition? What is the definition? 5G aims to be a huge leap forward in terms of the data rates, latency, Massive connectivity, network reliability, and energy efficiency. Let's just see. Let's just see. You have a smartphone with you. In that smartphone, maybe you have a two SIM cards. Okay, that means what? You are carrying the two mobiles with you. Every person, nowadays, every person has a mobile phone. And in that mobile phone, even some person has a two SIM cards. That means what? Number of users are increasing day by day. Okay, number of users are increasing day by day. That means what? You require to have a lots of connection in a kilometer. You can see over here, number of devices in a kilometer, right? Number of devices in a kilometer is increasing day by day. In the 4G, this is the, the lesser green part over here. This is about the IMT advance. It is also known as a 4G standard. And this greenish part over here is about the 5G network. You can see how you are evolving yourself. The connections you require, in a 4G, that is still the 10 to the power 5, and now it is 10 to the power 6. Means this much of devices you can connect, right? Again, you don't want to have a glitch. You don't want to have, you don't want to wait, right? You don't want to wait for the downloaded data. You want the live streaming, right? Live streaming with the less number of latency. So you can see in the 4G, it was a 10 millisecond, and now it is a 1 millisecond means you are moving, you are, you are reducing the latency. You are increasing the mobility by the 1.4 times. Okay, mobility, that is kilometer per hour. You don't want to have your call drop when you are moving from one cell to another cell, right? So that is what it, that requires a good mobility, how the soft handoff occurs, okay? It is again going to fulfill with the IMT 2020 standard. Spectrum efficiency, okay, what is the spectrum efficiency? That means if, if your data rate is too, too low, but still you can have a, you can have a faithful call, at least a faithful call. So this is how you increase the spectrum efficiency, efficiency of the spectrum, right? 
then user experience data rate. Yeah, I don't want 10 GPPS. I want 100 GPPS. Okay, I want more and more data rate. Like it is 100 Mbps. It's around the one GBPS. You can so you can see over here it increased in the uh, tenfold. Okay, pick data rate that is in GBPS, 20 GBPS. That is for the user. Okay, for the particular one user, it reached towards the 20 GBPS speed. This is all thing is wireless. Okay, this all thing is wireless. This capabilities are targeting it, realizing the high speed connectivity, Internet of Things. Augmented virtual reality, tactile internet, and so on. Okay, now how to achieve this thing? Take it, chalo. What I have done, I have defined the parameters. I have defined the parameters. Yes, I want that. I want a good spectrum efficiency. I want a user experience data rate. I want a big data rate of 20 Gbps. I want. I want to have a lots of connection in a particular, uh, particular area. I want to have a lots of devices in that particular area. And again, I want that it consumes a very less less energy. Your battery life. Okay. Up. When when you are going to purchase a mobile, you go to see that how much battery, um, means for how many time it will uh, have that battery life, okay? You want to save the energy, okay? So for that purpose, this purpose, what you have to do, what you have to do, you have to utilize, you, to, you have to have some requirements, you have to fulfill such requirements, and for that you have to move towards the microwave bands, okay? You, you require a new spectrum, you require a new waveforms, you require a new, new technology, you require the new radio access, Okay, this all things will be available, will, will be available in the 5G and the next generation networks. You require the large bandwidth. Okay, but when you will find the large bandwidth, everything is, everything is given like uh, uh, the frequency spectrums are already allocated. You don't have, you don't have that. So what you have to do, you have to move towards the microwave band. Okay, that is 3.3 to 4.2 gigahertz. So for the 5G, what they have done, what they have done, they have given the spectrum range. They have given the spectrum range that is beyond the uh, below the six gigahertz and above the six gigahertz. They have divided like that too. Okay, we will see in the next slide. So this is the thing that I was talking about: big data rate, user experience data rate, latency, mobility, connection density, energy efficiency, spectrum efficiency, and area traffic capacity. Fine, but we want these three services to work okay we want these three services to work what are the three services the first one is the ultra reliable low latency communication that is the ur llc it deals with what it deals with the traffic safety control remote manufacturing remote healthcare self driving car industrial application and control this all things requires a very low latency communication Okay, the data which can transfer from one device to another device, it should have very less amounts of time, right? And what are the features? Features of this, it will be, it should be ultra reliable. Okay, you should have a reliable transmission. You should have a very low latency. You should have a very high availability. These are the features. Okay, and what are the requirements? It should be less than one millisecond. And control panel latency should be less than 20 milliseconds. Okay, these are the requirements to achieve this URLLC, to achieve these applications. Okay, self-driving car, remote manufacturing, healthcare, industrial application, and all that. Okay, now move towards the now move towards the mobile broadband. That is enhanced mobile broadband. What you have, you have media everywhere. You have you know the OTT platforms, you know the live streaming. Okay, you know the UHD broadcast, like you want the ultra high definition on your smartphone on your laptop, okay, on your TV, right? You want the 3D video, 4K, 8K, UHD, okay? What do you want? You, you want gigabytes in a second. You want to have high-speed trains. You want to have AR, VR, everything. But how you can achieve that? For this, what you require? You require a high bandwidth, okay? Abhi sab log aise bol rahe. Everyone is speaking like bandwidth nahi hai, bandwidth nahi hai. Okay, it's like, no, there's no bandwidth, no bandwidth. What is the meaning of that? If you have a very high bandwidth, that means what? You will, you will support the lots of the data, okay? That is in gigabytes and all that. It will be a widespread coverage. You want the 
lots of coverage when when you when you move it's like uh, it's not like just putting a repeater in a first floor of the building and the second floor of the building you want a widespread coverage uh, coverage area okay then the requirements of the imt what are the depending on the features the requirements are 20 gbps 10 gbps for the uplink and downlink okay peak spectral efficiency 30 bits per second per hertz 15 bits per second per hertz like that okay so this is how technically they have finalized the rates for the 5g then there is a massive machine type communication okay what it is that is a smart home and building concept okay as i told you when you enter the home the ac will be on right and depending on the temperature that you need it will set accordingly you want a smart meter it can calculate the energy consumption of your home right you want a smart city wherever you go wherever you go you will have a internet wherever you go it will tell you um, you know number of apps in your mobile right it tells you the best location the best restaurant near you right the all things that is the smart city concept then there's a the fleet management tracking okay you track the things right you have uh, you have zomato order and you track that zomato order right it gives you it gives you information of that person wherever it is moving right so what you require for this what are the features it requires a massive numbers right number of devices are less more then it should be a low cost it should have a high battery life okay and it should have a small data volumes what are the requirements connection density that is a you can see over your 10 lakhs per square meter you can see in a kilometer that is a square kilometer in that there will be a 10 lakhs of mobile users or any any internet connected devices battery life should be better than 10 years okay so this is how we want in the 5g this is how the users want okay this is how the user want in the 5g now this all advancement which supports the basic 5g requirements are what are the advancement theek hai we want this all things but what are the advancement we want the increased bandwidth we want the number of devices we want the number of devices in a particular coverage area so for what 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 we need what what should be supported for that so that is the millimeter wave that is the one um, uh, that is the one um, uh, spectrum that you can use to have increased bandwidth okay so existing micro bands for mobile system are hugely congested okay as it is occupied by 2g 3g 4g okay it is hugely congested so what you need you need a high bandwidth increased bandwidth for that you have to shift yourself to the millimeter wave bands that is what 28 to 300 gigahertz jo khali hai okay it is it is available to you to use right then there is a massive mimo okay the use of higher frequency makes it possible to deploy large scale antennas arrays at the base station right your mobile you know your smartphone if you are using your iphone or any smartphone it has a eight number of antennas in that can you imagine eight number of antennas in a one uh, in a one uh, like a this foot mobile right so it uses the massive mimo concept okay it uses the it it gives you a lots of gain that is if there is no number of antennas you will have a more array gains with you right to overcome the path loss and provide the spatial multiplexation gain this is thing this is the thing with the massive mimo concept so this technology this advancement this things we can use for the 5g purpose then there is a network densification what we can do let's see what is the network densification let me just tell you okay this is the network densification this is the one cell okay and that cell is divided into a different different subcells right we are we are just denoting it as a circular but uh, originally it is like a hexagon cell okay so what we are doing we are densifying the network and we are accord, accommodating more number of users in this okay that is the network densification this will result in a traffic to small cells in indoor hotspots and dense urban micro cell imagine yourself you are sitting in a uh, football stadium and you are watching the live game 
okay you are sitting in a stadium and you are watching the live football game simultaneously you are calling your friend on a video call and showing him a live streaming of that things imagine all the users all the people who sit uh, in that uh, stadium they all are using their mobile phone at a time okay that means what at a time so it is, has a capacity of suppose uh, of 1 lakh uh, people sitting in a stadium and they all are using a one uh, uh, all are using a, a mobile at a time so you can imagine how much data traffic will be there right so we have to support that things okay we have to do that uh, suppose some situation arise when there is a uh, some holiday right we are having a thanksgiving suppose black friday and like that diwali take a take a so at that time people will use more and more messages more and more data and for that purpose you need to have a more and more coverage you need to support the more and more devices in a particular uh, in a particular uh, location okay so this is the uh, concept of the network densification in that now how it can be shaped the future 5g what are the technology what are the advancement which shape the future 5g the one of the advantage is noma that is the non orthogonal multiple access and another advantage is uh, another advancement is deep learning solutions okay deep learning so it requires the deep neural networks okay and noma is what it, you are using the non orthogonal uh, channels okay so that you can accommodate more and more number of users in a one cell right now as we come to the very basic equation of the capacity we come to the basic very uh, uh, anything in the communication start with the shannon right anything in the communication it goes with the shannon's capacity formula okay what is that it is like we have the cell density multiplied with the spectral efficiency and multiplied with the available spectrum okay so you can see the capacity capacity of the data goes with the density of the cell that is the cells per kilometer square how many more cells you can accommodate in this you see you see the term is written as cells per kilometer square right it's not like one cell in a 1 kilometer it's like a many cells in a kilometer then there is a spectral efficiency which is given by beats per second per hertz per cell okay that means you require a data rate you require a throughput and spectrum that means the bandwidth it is available in hertz okay available spectrum aapke paas kitni bandwidth hai how much bandwidth you have okay so what you what you if you have increasing data traffic you require to have a thousand time more traffic per area you can see as i told you the one example about the football stadium you have to handle the thousand times more traffic per area okay in a 1 km square so how to how to achieve this how to achieve this thousand times how to achieve this thousand times i want thousand times okay i want how thousand times but how to achieve this so these are the two uh, uh, telecom companies which have uh, taken uh, which have achieved this much of things okay with this capacity formula okay this is the one capacity formula that you have to focus in which you have to maximize these three parameters okay that is the cell density spectral efficiency and spectrum okay higher cell density they have achieved with the tenfold SK Telecom, they have achieved with the 56 uh, fold, right? Spectral efficiency, 10, 10 times. This is 6 times. More spectrum. This is 10 times. This is 3 times. You can see over here. 10, 10, 10. It gives you 1,000 times, right? And then you multiply this 56, 6, and 3. And how much it will be? You can imagine, right? So how to achieve this? how to achieve the 10 time higher cell density okay so you have to put the more access point per kilometer square you have to increase okay this is the cell density you have to increase the cell density you have to increase the spectral efficiency you have to increase the available spectrum okay so how to do that so first of all cell density if you want to increase the cell density that means what you have to have a more number of access points right you can see over here this is how you are moving from this uh, six cells to the 12 cells and to the 24 cells likewise okay you are moving like that so you will have a more number of access points so if you have a more access points that means you can support the more number of users second thing is the higher spectral efficiency 
that means what no any call drop should be there if the user at the cell edge it should even experience a 1 gbps of data rate if user is near to the tower let's say in a layman's language that you are near to the tower okay you are having a very good speed you are achieving a very good data and all that but if you are or uh, if you are very far distant distance from the cell, uh, from the tower you should same achieve that things that means what they both should experience a good data rate satisfactory data rate okay so that can be that is known as a what higher spectral efficiency how we can achieve that we can achieve that with the help of a direct signal okay you can just give the direct signal to the, the particular user okay so this is how we can achieve it then you require the more frequency spectrum as i told you you require a large bandwidth okay large bandwidth how to achieve that for that for that you have to use the higher frequencies we can go to the higher frequencies where the available spectrum is available for you to use it okay so this is how this is how you are in, you are having a thousand times you can see 20 cross 5 100 100 cross 10 a thousand times more things that you can achieve with these three things okay that is the higher cell density spectral efficiency and frequency spectrum okay now spectrum need right you require the spectrum who requires the spectrum emvb requires mmtc requires urlc requires the spectrum okay so dena to padega they all require for this application they require the spectrum so emvb range it, it it is given as below both that is fr1 and fr2 i'll tell you what is fr1 and fr2 but fr1 is like below 6 gigahertz and above 6 gigahertz that are used for the emvb okay and it is a large continuous channel bandwidth it, it is a good coverage it is unlicensed band okay you no need to go for the licenses for licensing purpose okay then there is a mmtc it is a sub gigahertz that is a sub one gigahertz is preferred for that because it requires a small channel bandwidth right it requires a small channel bandwidth so we can go with the one gigahertz sub, sub one gigahertz and it has a stable license spectrum urlc very exclusive and high priority we need for this because it deals with the remote healthcare system critical situations like that so for that purpose, you require an exclusive and high priority access. Okay. So you, you even want a frequency diversity for reliability. Reliability, right? You want the you want your data that 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 which is reliable. Okay. So 5G radio. Okay, 5G radio. It supports the both type of duplexing, FDD as well as the TDD. There are two frequency ranges, as I have told you, FR1 and FR2. So this is like 450 to 7.125 gigahertz, and FR2 is 24 to 52 gigahertz. Okay, FR1 supports both FDD and TDD, and FR2 supports the TDD bands. Okay, this is the uh, uh, whatever I just told you, which is graphically represented over here. You can see this is the EMBB range that is from uh, 4.5 gigahertz to 7.125 gigahertz. Okay, it is increased. This is sub -gig, 6 gigahertz, including the LTE. This is millimeter wave, okay, 25 to 84 gigahertz frequency. These are the licensing options you can have. Okay. Now, this table gives the all uh, frequency bands you can see over here N1, N2, N3 and uplink band downlink band from the fdd you will have a both uplink and downlink which is separated okay and for the tdd you will have only a one band of frequency this is for the fr1 and it varies from 5 to 100 megahertz okay the maximum you can support have a, maximum you can have a frequency band bandwidth that is 100 megahertz Okay, and this is for the FR2. FR2 only supports the TDD mode. Okay, as I told you, FR2 only supports the TDD mode and it, it goes till the 400 megahertz of maximum bandwidth. It ranges from 50 to 400 megahertz, but the maximum you can achieve is the 400 megahertz. Right. 
Now, this is the comparison between FR1 and millimeter wave. The comparison is carried out in terms of the propagation mechanism, right? Uh, path loss, uh, LOI stands for the line of sight path loss, shadowing and blockages, diffraction, weather, RF channel, bandwidth. Okay, this comparison is carried out uh, between the uh, below 6 gigahertz, that is a sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave propagation. Okay, you can just see over here that path loss is very less in this, but very high in this millimeter wave communication, right? As you can see, this is the millimeter wave. That means what the wavelength of that is very, very less. Okay, that is in millimeter range. You can see this is two gigahertz. The higher the frequency, the lowest lower is the wavelength. Due to this, there will be a lot of path loss. Lot, there will be a lot of scattering. Okay, you, you have to have a LOS. So if you are dealing with the IoT applications, if you are dealing with the IoT applications, what you will do, you go for the LOS communication. Okay, propagation should be more of the LOS, right? Okay, diffraction, there is no diffraction in the millimeter wave, while uh, over here, it has the propagation around object, which, it, which gives you a, which gives you an advantage actually. Now, this is the capacity and coverage comparison. See, see how there is a trade-off between the capacity and coverage. If you increase the coverage in the rural area, you will have a good coverage, but capacity is very less. Okay, in urban, right, urban, that means where you are living in the buildings, they both are same. Capacity is good as well as the coverage is good. Okay, but at the same, at the same rate, that is in one to six gigahertz. Above 6 gigahertz, you will have a good capacity, very good capacity, and the coverage is very, very less. Okay, that's why that's why you need to put your devices in a very minimum distance. Okay, you need to put your devices to the towards the base station. That is the urban. This is kind of hotspot. You know that, okay? If you are if you are transferring data from your one mobile device to another mobile device, you need to you need to be together like this, right? So that is what the hotspot you are taking the hotspot. But capacity is very good. You will achieve the same data speed, but the coverage is very less. Okay. So this is the network architecture of the 5G. Uh, this is very, very differing from the 1G, 2G, right? Where we have the base station, then we have the um, BSC, and then we have MSC, right? But we have over here mostly the virtual networks. Okay, we, we are, that is enabled by software defined networks. Okay, these are the all networks you can see over here. Most of the network functions are virtual and deploy in the cloud. What is the physical thing? The physical thing is just a base station over here. Okay, that, that is the physical. The physical thing is the mobile. The physical thing is the base station. After that, everything is in cloud. Okay, this is everything is deployed in the cloud, right? N1 and N2, these are the path by which you are carrying out your information. This is how you are connecting to the cloud. Okay. This is the service based core network. This is the core network, which is based on the services, right? APIs, access points for accessing core network functions. There are APIs, network slicing capabilities. Okay. We, we, will, we, will sli we can slice our networks according to our applica applications. Okay. And this is connected with what? Data network, that is the operator or an internet. Okay, so this is all totally a virtual cloud network, which is used in the 5G. Fine. The source which is taken from the 5G Americas is a wonderful website. You can go for this and you can search out for this. Okay, now what we were telling, we were telling in the 4G is the base station. But what we tell the base station in the 5G, that is the GNB. And GNB stands for the next generation node B. This is used for the all the next generation RAM networks. Okay, radio access networks. Jobi apke next generation radio access network hai, that all are called as a GNB. Okay, you can see over here where LTE and ENB is connected to the EPC. Okay, this is the EPC, how it is connected. And NR. This is new radio we are using in 5G is the new radio and which is connected to the next generation core and how they both are communicating with each other. That means what? We are not jumping from 4G to 5G. We are smoothly transiting ourselves from 4G to 5G. It's like this is the smoothly transition 
that we cannot just we cannot just remove our base station and put this GNB like this, right? So what we are doing, we are smoothly we are smoothly transiting from one uh, from one technology to the another technology. Okay. Now this is the 5G NR you can see over here. It has a um, um, PRB structure, right? It has a 12 RES in that. It it is flexible with the both TDD as well as FDD. Modulation, we are using the 256QM coding, which we are using LDPC and Polar codes mostly. Okay. Uh, flexible numerology you are having for this purpose, OFDM. Okay, OFDM for downlink and uplink, we are using the flexible numerology. These are the parameters, okay, for the FR1 and FR2. You know this. What is FR1? 4.5 gigahertz to 7. Uh, uh, 7.125 gigahertz and this is a far to 2.4 to 5.26 gigahertz right and these are all it is given you can see the fft it is 33008 it supports the number of subcarriers that is 3300 number of subcarriers means what number of users at a time you can support this much of users for that purpose you require the this 4096 fft right the modulation you can go for this 250 qm right radio frame length 10 milliseconds likewise Okay, bandwidth per carrier. This is the maximum you can achieve that 100 megahertz and FR2 400 megahertz. Right, subcarrier spacing is even specified. So these parameters are specified for the 5G standards. Right. Now, what is that station densification? Base station. Okay. So I have just used the term base station, but it is GNB. This is again a capacity formula. Okay, you can see this is the density, number of signaling, bandwidth. This is the power of the received power, which is useful. This is the noise power, which is not useful. And this is the interference power, which I don't want. Interference means what? If another cell is there near to your cell, it will provide interference to your cell. Okay, so you have to remove that interference. You have to remove the noise. And you have to gain only the power which is allocated to you. Okay. So this is the main basic formula, but how to get this thousand type capacity, a capacity, this capacity, how to increase this? So you can linearly increase these three parameters. Okay, these three parameters you can linearly increase. What are that? More bandwidth. That is the W. W stands for the bandwidth. Okay, you can increase the more bandwidth. You can increase the more number of antennas, that is N. Okay, you go for the massive MIMO. How to have the uh, bandwidth? You go for the millimeter wave technology. How to have the more number of antennas? You go for the massive MIMO purpose. What is the network densification? Okay, you go with the URLLC, right? Network densification, linear capacity gain with no apparent limitation. Okay, cell splitting concept you apply over here. Okay, so this is how you achieve the capacity because this equation is fixed. Okay, this equation is fixed. The thing is you have to maximize these three variables, right? To achieve the thousand times capacity. Got it? Now, last is how to achieve this 5G. As I have told you, these are the three. Another thing, you require a new radio multiplexing technology. You require the new efficient spectrum usage techniques. You require the energy saving mechanism. You require the new spectrum. You require the application specific improvements. So these are the questions. These are the things that you require to achieve the 5G network. Fine, so let's summarize this session. Uh, this is 225. So we know that 5G, it is defined in an eight parameters, right? That is the latency, peak data rate, user experience data rate, spectral efficiency, mobility support, energy efficiency, and traffic capacity. Three main service categories you do. EMBB, URLC. Okay, I have added one more that is EV2X. That is the enhanced vehicle to everything. See, driverless cars, okay, you, you put your car on an uh, automatic mode, right? And it will, it, will, it will identify where the other car is at the distance, at which distance the other car is there, okay, if any roadblock is there, right? So that is the EV2X. So this is another technology. This is the another service category which is just added. And there is the MMTC. It requires a new spectrum, new radio access, new waveforms, large bandwidths, and all that, okay? So finally, if I want to summarize the, what is 5G, what is the aim of the 5G? It is like this. Anybody who at anywhere can communicate with anyone at any time by any network. Got it? No need to have any protocols. 
no need to have some rules to just have a connection with the another thing you can connect anything at any time okay anywhere with anyone okay this is the aim of the 5g system now you can imagine what will be there in the 6g can you imagine okay these are the references okay you can have this references uh these are the acronyms what these terms are i have used it okay it is all given over here thank you very much all of you and uh, you can ask any question if you have yes ma'am so yes, on please. first of all on behalf of entire pew family i am thanking you for sharing your time resources and knowledge everything with us so thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the very beginning in the very beginning the timeline of the evolution in wireless technology you explained was just up to the mark ma'am up to the mark yes thank and you and more over that the example more over that the example of that latency reduction from latency reduction from 10 millisecond to 3 millisecond that part was just awesome thank you thank you and thank you. i am sure that after listening or after uh, after having this session with you the audience including the, all of us including us are well motivated to explore the various research domain related to the 5g technology yeah. so based on that just i want to raise one question that yes uh, what are the main research opportunity or uh, general research domains related to this area okay so if you talk about uh, uh, what research can be proposed in this so first of all uh, yes, exactly. it's like yeah yeah so uh, it's like new radio access technologies we are incorporating right we can go for the millimeter wave technologies okay and you can go for the uh, messy machine as i told you there are three aspects that you can focus on right so you can go with the uh, uh, first of all the deep neural networks okay that is the one of the very good area that you can cover another thing is that we want more number of devices to be connected in a cell right so we are moving from orthogonality to non orthogonality right so you can go for that radio multiplexing technique right another thing is that ki uh, you require a larger bandwidth uh, for that purpose you go for the millimeter wave communication so these are the three massive mimo noma and millimeter wave communication these are the three right now uh, very good research uh, areas that you can focus on okay thank you ma'am so, okay if time permits us ma'am we will surely yeah. invite you again for knowledge yeah and yeah. this uh, to have the knowledge about this latest trend in a great detail so yeah, sure sure just thank for today and have a nice day Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.